To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that are shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. Welcome back to my last episode on Bloom, where we are planted. Today, I want to share about embracing rest. Embracing rest. Do you know that the opposite of work is not rest? Rather, work must embrace rest as part of effective working. You may ask why talk about rest. This is because we are a piled on, stretched to the limit society. We are a tired generation. We have too much activity and we try to remain connected all the time. We are stressed by information overload. We are stressed by accessibility overload. We are stressed by anxiety overload too. This can arise from problems you carry home from work or a combination of work, family or health-related anxieties. Many of us are like Job when he said, I have no peace, no quietness, I have no rest, but only turmoil. Job chapter 3 verse 26 Remember that you and I only have one life to live and to enjoy. Is your life larger than your work or your work larger than your life? Should you work to live or live to work? Don't ask God. He has already answered. Consider God's created rhythm of life. He paused after six days of creation, not for himself, but for us to emulate. He's telling us that rest is an important investment for productive work. He improves our health, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. It reinvigorates us from greater effectiveness or for greater effectiveness and efficiency. It allows for a better state of being for healthier relationship as well. Psalms 23 states, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. These verses invoke a need to let God lead us to quiet waters. Now, why did God institute rest for our body and soul? Well, because we are not wired to work continuously. Otherwise, otherwise we literally work ourselves to death. I want to now touch on the area of regular and good sleep. One of the ways God gives us rest is through sleep. There are two aspects of sleep that are necessary. One is the regular sleep we all require. To have adequate amounts of sleep is a blessing. The psalmist affirms this. He says, In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Psalms chapter 127 verse 2 It is a foregone conclusion that there are consequences for inadequate amounts of sleep, both health-wise and in our productivity. Having regular and adequate hours of sleep is only one part of the solution though. The second aspect of sleep is that it must be good. Research shows that poor sleep has immediate negative effects on our hormones, on our performance and brain function. Poor sleep can lead to health risks too. There are many causes for poor sleep. Common sense will indicate that these include caffeine intake late in the night, an irregular sleep routine, late night snacks, vigorous exercise late at night, focused work before bedtime, 
and an unfamiliar mattress or pillow. There are many remedies including all kinds of food or beverages that can increase the chance of good sleep. Information about these is readily available through various websites. However, one very important recipe for good sleep is found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, when Apostle Peter says, Cast all your anxieties on Him, because He cares for you. This is both a belief and an act. You must first be convinced that God truly cares for you, even in those areas you do not have a solution for the moment. Then you must act by faith and He will deliver you. The evidence of it is to rest in Him while you sleep. Sleep as a basic form of rest is vocation blind. Whether you are serving in church ministry, in the workplace, or as a homemaker, adequate and good sleep make for good stewardship of our bodies and souls. And now I want to touch on the area of Sabbath rest. Sabbath rest. God instituted the Sabbath as a day of rest after six days' work. This is the second kind of rest. It is a rest from our weekly labor. Sabbath comes from the Hebrew word that means to cease to stop working. It refers to doing nothing related to work for a 24-hour period each week. We have to accept that keeping to this definition in practice is both challenging and radical for many of us. And so I'm not here to be legalistic about full compliance. I myself confess to falling short. Jesus himself warned against making the Sabbath a burden instead of a practice. But having said that, the principle is both sound and necessary. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. We need to realize that the Sabbath is a blessing. The Sabbath was given to us as a gift, not a penalty. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 to 11. The principle is to have a longer period of rest, not just a momentary rest or nap. It is important enough for God to make it into a command for his people. But like all other commandments, the benefits can only be experienced when appropriated. There are at least three important types of restoration that come from rest. The first is restoration to our moral senses. Rest allows us to reflect and recalibrate our moral senses. Secondly, is restoration to our spiritual senses. This means the Lord restores our ability to listen and resonate with Him. This takes active listening with our heart. We can sharpen our spiritual senses when we are at rest. The deep calls to the deep when we are at rest. Thirdly, restoration from weariness. We can be weary because of the challenges we face, not least in the workplace. And rest will allow us the necessary restoration from weariness. The world works against our Christian value and there will always be tension. If we are weary, we may succumb to the world and its temptations. Fourthly, Restoration as an act of trust. We need to be reminded that we are not the one who keeps the world going and that God is the ultimate provider of all things. 
Jesus even chided his disciples for worrying too much, as God was the one who provided for the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. We are certainly more valuable to God than the world that he is sustaining. And truthfully, no thanks to us. The restoration of our trust in God is our restedness is good for ourselves, our businesses, and those we work with. Here's an example of one who upheld this belief. Through it, Kathy, founder of the Chick-fil-A restaurant chain, passed away in 2014 at the age of 93. He started the first Chick-fil-A restaurant in 1967 in the Greenbrier Mall near Atlanta, Georgia. Today, there are over 2,000 restaurants in over 40 states. Their restaurants are closed on Sundays because, as Truett Cathy puts it, closing our business on Sunday, the Lord's Day, is our way of honouring God and showing our loyalty to Him. Now, closing on Sunday also allows their employees to attend church or to have a day of rest. It was reported that the restaurant chain loses about $1 billion US a year as a result. But there is no indication they will change their policy. Despite their action, some business experts commented, it cements Chick-fil-A reputation, benefits workers, and persuades customers to come back with a greater sense of urgency. God honoured Kathy and his family. He was listed among the billionaires on the Forbes magazine's 400 richest people in America. Let me conclude by saying this. Rest is stewardship. As Parker Palmer puts it, self-care is never a selfish act. It is simply good stewardship of the only gift I have the gift I was put on earth to offer others. Anytime we can listen to self, true self and give it the care it requires, we do it not only for ourselves, but for the many others whose lives we touch. This is true of ministry in church. This is true of ministry in our families. This is true of ministry in the workplace. You know, as I'm now in my mid-60s, I appreciate this need for rest and self-care even more. And that includes the discipline to take short breaks. Otherwise, we cannot give more to those we love or those we wish to bless. As Peter Scazzaro puts it, few Christians make the connection between love of self and love of others. We are called to lay down our lives for others. But remember, you first need a self to lay down. Rest is certainly a spiritual discipline. What better way to have a clear mind to listen to the still small voice of God's gentle spirit ministering to us than when we are at rest? It gives us clearer spiritual discernment. Now this is what happened to Elijah when he had a pinnacle experience at Mount Carmel, defeating the 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah. And then, frantically, running away from Queen Jezebel who went all out to kill him. He became depressed and suicidal, thinking he was fighting this all on his own. Now what's the antidote? The angel of the Lord touched him, fed him, and caused him to have a good rest. This restored his perspective. This energized him. This sharpened his spiritual senses. It enabled him to finish well and equip his protege, Elisha. As a result, he became a revered prophet rather than a defeated one. But do you know, a greater one was and is here, none other than our Lord Jesus. And he taught us to embrace rest too. 
how can we do any less? Jesus also bites us. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Certainly, we disobey him at our own peril. Well, I've come to the end of this entire eight sessions or episodes on bloom where you are planted in relation to the workplace. I pray you have been ministered to and may you make your workplace your holy ground for the Lord. God bless you. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.